Well, well, well. It's Wednesday. It is the 27th of September. It's 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Bob Harris. This is the Football Diehards YouTube channel, and it's time to go on the hot seat. But first, footballdiehards.com is, uh, is the website. Uh, we appreciate you joining us here on the YouTube channel every Wednesday at this time. Also, on Saturdays at noon when I answer a bunch of questions. We're going to answer some tonight. Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and then hit the like button. Or the dislike, I'll break the seal on the dislike, as is my custom. If you want to jump in, I don't. I could take a dislike, but, but, but like, dislike, do something. Uh, glad you could make it. Uh, we have many, many, many things going on. So many things that many of us forget to do our own lineups or, or make waiver wire moves or screw up our guillotine leagues. Crazy stuff happens. So let's get right into this right now. Without any further delay, I'm going to bring on my great guest today. Uh, you know her as the co-star and... Well, the star, the co-host and star of the Fantasy Dirt uh, oh, radio program on Sirius real. XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Uh, works alongside Michael Fabiano. You probably remember her from NFL Network and DirecTV. The still the best uh, to this day total access anchor uh, that's ever been on that network. So, uh, Lindsay Rhodes. Lindsay Rhodes is here. Uh, how are you, Lindsay? Um, well, I was fine until about five minutes ago when, and shots fired already, okay, that forgets to make her waiver or wire guillotine ads was directed at me. I just realized, like, your producer's like, one minute to air, and I started screaming expletives because going through my computer, I realized that I'd forgotten to put in my waiver claims for guillotine for the second week in a row. <sighs> Bob, one of my favorite things you're about Lindsay to... Rose is, is she swears almost as much as I do. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're giving away all the all the secrets hello everybody uh happy to see you all in the chat i see the questions are coming in colin clayton golf boy john fusek jim furry hello how is everyone dame nice to see you uh dominic humberto uh we'll be taking your questions here want to get through a couple things uh, before we get to those like here's the thing lindsay in the guillotine league mm -hmm. just lose week one like i did and it doesn't matter the rest of the season i got whacked early in that one <laughs> Ah, uh, brutality. This so is, much brutality. This is, look, the problem with the guillotine for me this year has been that I've taken on, and I know I'm talking to somebody who you have how many regular, how many se regular season, like redraft leagues do you do? Like 30 something? Okay. That's 30 something. It's 30 Are you something. smirking because I'm, it's actually much higher than that? It's, it's slightly, no, it's not much higher than that. It's in that range. I, Actually, I'd have to count them again. I th uh, last time I counted, I think it was like 34. Um, but I don't know. When As I'm setting You're a lineup, it feels like so many more. Look, I'm not yeah, even like, so I'm going to do more. I'm only doing, uh, I'm only doing. See now, see, I'm sitting here in a conversation with you and I've turned my crazy 15 redraft, like lineups that I have to manage into only 15. Like nowhere else in the world is that a statement. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting used to the pace of it. And, you know, the, the guillotine being in a different place and on a different schedule is messing me up. And it's like, I can't, I can't chat. get around the fact that those are, those are due in the middle of the day. And I keep right. having it in my head that it's the end of the night. And just at some point before I need to, before I go to bed, I need to get those in. And then, you know, it's, uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Hopefully I'll be your partner. Dame overboard in the chat. I also forgot to put in guillotine waivers and missed out on ARSB and Waddle both. Stupid work getting in the way. Hello, Mr. Scampers. Hello, Albert. Hello, Mike Arts. Hello, Melissa. Nice to see everyone. We will get to the questions in a minute. I want to. So I've been on a little kick here, Lindsay, and you can help me out with this. I'm just kind of gathering opinions. Like September is such a volatile month, right? We've got a Thursday night game, people. We all know this, and there's people who are questionable: Christian Watson, Aaron Jones, David Montgomery. You all seem likely to play in this one. Uh, but but we get to a point, I think, you know, early in the season where the volatility of the NFL just kind of can really derail our season. And I've tried to I've been trying to talk myself into being more open into the notion, like you know, the the standard easy answer to all these questions is player studs. Well, you draft the guys to be your studs that might not be your studs. This according to Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, the first two weeks of Jamar Chase. I mean, many, many people and others have emerged as studs, says Puka Nakua, although last week wasn't great. But Tutu Atwell, Brian Robinson, anybody on the Miami Dolphins. So what is what is your approach? Or, you know, I mean, I, like I think week one, we're all starting the guys we drafted to start week one. Yes. How soon are all bets off? Like, I'm not saying you have to be dropping people. Don't do that, people. If the panic button is not good. But 
making adjustments seems like totally reasonable to me, but how do you, how do you draw that line? So funny you should say that. I just pulled up my roster for one of my leagues. Uh, I, my son was looking at who I have. It's like a family league. And so he was like, so I'm playing him this week. And so he's like, pull up your roster. Let's see what it looks like. And I was like, my roster actually looks kind of crappy because it's full of all my waiver wire ads because I have done what you said where I'm just moving people down. And like, um, for instance, Khalil Herbert, who I think I drafted in this league is my RB2. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's usable necessarily. And I have Kyron Williams. And so that's going to be a back and forth, you know, on a week to week basis. N maybe Herbert this week with the matchup he kind of maximizes whatever value he's going to have for me against Denver. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, my, my bench is the team I drafted. I've got Terry McLaurin on my bench. I've got Drake London on my bench. I've got Garrett Wilson on my bench. And then these people that I've gone and picked up off of waivers, like tank Dell, I've got in my lineup, uh, Marvin Mims, I've got in my lineup. Like there are people that have just kind of, um, and it's going to be probably a week to week, type of matchup based decision. There are a few people that I'm just like, I'm just going to put you right down here for now. And I'm not giving up. I just need to see it before you make it back into my lineup based on the production that I've seen so far. So yeah, I think it's, I think it is, it's probably that week, honestly, because it's a small sample size through two weeks through three weeks. Now we've established some patterns. If you've put up three straight weeks of single digit outings, then I might need to hit the pause button on you and just kind of revisit this situation in a little while. Mm -hmm. And so I've started making some adjustments on my bench. And in fact, this is the week um, that I started looking at kickers and I literally don't look at kickers. Fabs and I fight about this on fantasy dirt all the time. He's like, Oh, it's called football. Kickers have to be a part of it. I'm like, I have no fun trying to predict kicker. Like that's just not. And he argues that the tight end, you could, it's so volatile too. And it feels random. And so we could take the tight end out. I'm like, at least the tight end is in the offense. And so if we're trying to figure out football stuff and X's and O's and where the matchups are and all that kind of stuff, then at least the tight end fits into that in some way. The kicker, and I know that there are arguments for the kicker too, It, but for me, it's just not, it's not, it's not the fun for me trying to predict the game, the game script. And so um, this is the week where I look back and I see like, does my kicker suck? I literally haven't even looked at their numbers. And so I'm like, oh, my kicker is way down here. And so maybe it's time to make an adjustment and, and figure out like a, like a Matt Crater who's, you know, at the top of the rankings and, and it's right. been consistent. And so revisit kind of the thought process with uh, regard to <clears throat> why we picked who we picked at the kicker position. I think that's totally fair. And kickers, by the way, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to oversimplify, but I keep it pretty simple. Late buys, so I don't have to make a roster move until late in the season. This is the hazard mm -hmm. of having 30 plus leagues. Also, um, connected to good offenses, right? I mean, it, you know, it, it, and then and then you adjust. And I do exactly what you do. I look down the list and see, oh, wow, look at who's performing well. It's good to have a nice little chart in front of you. Uh, hey, Royal Slade, nice to see you. Hi, Anthony. Thanks for everyone for coming. Got a nice I hate that I can't see these comments. Questions. I want to say hi to people. Uh, hi, well, people. Say hi to everybody. And I will read you the questions and we'll go through them. Um, a, a couple of things like, you know, I just like as we're going into this, you know, going into this, I keep thinking September is the month that destroys me usually. Like if I can get to, you know, and it's like, like some players come through. If the draft, if the draft capital pays off, I'm doing pretty good by the end of September. If things go awry, if I have a bunch of Derrick Henry, a bunch of Josh Jacobs, maybe a bunch of Trevor Lawrence, uh, you know, and not enough Tua, uh, you know, or, you know, and, and I've had people text me like, damn it, I should have, I, I need to quit starting Trevor and start Tua, right? I mean, and you come to that point where you have to do that. But I think that's what I'm trying to, every year I feel like I'm doing the same exercises. What, what do I need to do? How do I need to open my mind to different possibilities and different approaches and, and what approaches might be useful and, and, and I think, I think just in general, what I'm, what I'm ending up at is being a little more open, a little less dogmatic, uh, you know, with like, okay, I invest in this guy. Look, we invest based on an entire history, like, you know, for Derrick Henry or Josh Jacobs, it dates back before this off season. And, you know, at some point we've got to be willing to say, okay, it's not working right now. I went back and looked at Derrick Henry's numbers. He was a little slow starting last year as well. Not this slow. But I think we just need, I think I need to be a little more open-minded and that's what I'm going to start experimenting with is trying to be a little more open to making adjustments to my lineup, not my roster, mm -hmm. my lineup, you know, I'm still like invested in the players I'm invested in. And I think, you know, 
uh, it just many, many years, I feel like we're talking about the things we're talking about in September are absolutely have no relation to what we're talking about in November and December. Right. And I throw out the example of Tom Brady a couple of years ago being a horrible deep ball passer for half a year, then ending the season as the best deep ball passer in football. These things happen. Mm -hmm. Right there. And so we, uh, so uh, I just I, I think it's the I think it's something I need to I need to, to be more open to. I don't know. if, And it's not easy. I think that's the problem. It's not easy. Well, I think the hard part early in the season is knowing which problems like what's the root of the problem? What's going on here? And is it likely to continue? Like I, I mentioned adjusting kickers at this point in time. Last year, in at least one league around this time, I cut Justin Tucker. And by the way, Justin Tucker's like at the bottom of the kicker rankings again this year, right? right? Like he's not, he's not up near the top. So you used a relatively high draft pick. If you have Justin Tucker on your team, you know, in terms of kickers, you didn't like just wait and take the last guy that was available or anything. You actually went out and grabbed the first one. So it, you could look at this and go, eh, you know, but then I think that's an instance where you're like, please just be patient, right? Like Justin Tucker's going to come around and he's going to put up fantasy points. Um, there are other people that you have to kind of be a little bit more malleable, like like DeAndre Hopkins. I have a lot of shares of DeAndre Hopkins because I just was banking at that point in the season on at that ADP, I think he's still going to be the same wide receiver. There wasn't really a ton of evidence that he'd fallen off a cliff. I think we were putting him in like a bad offense, and this is what it looks like in a bad offense, and we can't expect we're going to get wide receiver production like the Titans got last year, but then when you go back to when they last had a really good number one wide receiver with A.J. Brown, that he was putting up good fantasy numbers with Ryan Tannehill and with um, Derrick Henry, and so I kind of bet on the talent for him and so far but he's been dealing with an injury so i also feel like i need to be patient here I'll, this goes back to like you're saying don't change the roster but maybe change the lineup you know i'm not right. dropping him or anything crazy but i am going to take him out of my lineup because we're just not seeing it and we're not it's not just that we're not seeing it from him we're not seeing it in the offense ryan Tannehill doesn't look like a quarterback that's going to produce for us um, for our wide receiver. And so I think that there are better options out there, but I think you have to be able to read the situation and know where patience is going to be a virtue for you and where you're just going to like keep that guy on your bench because he was that last round pick and you really believed in him. Those are the guys that are tough are like if tank Dell hadn't actually already broken right. out, but the talent <laughs> was still there and like, let's pretend like it hadn't already happened, but now we know it was, it, it's going to happen in week six. Just they, they hadn't yet moved to it that's a guy that you drop from your roster before, before it happens. And then you get stuck because you dropped him to add somebody who you just needed that upgrades you. I, I mean, but maybe doesn't, you know, like there, there are some people that you're going to pick up in the first few weeks because they have a big week, but there's not really that much behind it. Right. And so I think that's right, the look, trickiest part about the first couple of weeks. That that's, uh, that's a good point. Like we're, we're picking up guys off the waiver wire based on a single game. Yet we're not starting players. Like, you know, like how long did it take you to get Puka Nakua in the lineups or Tutu Atwell or Kyron Williams, right? I mean, maybe still you're evolving on that. And by the way, a few more people in the chat, Tootsie Pop, great to see you. She says, hi. Uh, and uh, Jeff loves your afternoon show with Fabs. Tootsie, uh, Tootsie Pop says her Thanks. cat's birthday is Saturday. I hope you're here Saturday, Rachel. So I can uh, say happy birthday to the cat. My cats will say happy birthday as well. Uh, tons of questions here. So let's get to some of the questions. Uh, okay. First, tomorrow night's game, Jordan Love. You know, it's too early to say we're right or wrong about things, I feel. I mean, that comes later in the year. But I feel like Jordan Love has proven to be, you know, kind of my thought on him all offseason was the Packers probably have a better idea of what he is than we do. And they probably know that he's going to be okay. They've surrounded him with great young talent. When, when we get to the end of the season or as we're heading into next year, how are we going to view Jordan Love, do you think? Oh, good question. I mean, there's still so much, like we said, I don't want to get way ahead of ourselves here and just make any wild proclamations based on a three game sample size. And by the way, last week for much of the game, it didn't really look that great. Like the fantasy I... number at the end of the day is really impressive, but like there's still a lot of work that we can do on Jordan Love's game. Um, I, I like the, I, I like a lot of the things that I've seen so far from him though in that like it doesn't feel too big for him i kind of like in intangible ways that are hard to really figure out how important they are the fact that the whole group or at least like the skill position players outside of aaron jones they're kind of in the same age range and so they'll have an opportunity to grow together 
you know, you always see that when like the backup quarterback gets thrown into the game and they talk about the fact right. that he has chemistry with some random wide receiver it's like the number three wide receiver because he's actually gone up and down and and practices with that quarterback's you know position group when they're getting like second team reps or whatever um so i like the fact that they're going to be able to grow together i'd like to see him with christian watson right i mean that's that's a facet of the offense that we haven't even seen that kind of field stretcher element there and so um I, I do think I agree with you. I'm always in the camp that like they they've been looking at him at practice and I think they've got a better read on what they're looking at here. If they're willing to move on from Aaron Rodgers, and there were a bunch of reasons to be willing to move on from right. Aaron Rodgers at this point for Green Bay. Right. Um, but I think part of the equation for them had to be that they thought that Jordan Love could do what we've seen him do so far. So I think at the very least, barring just a total collapse, they have a guy that they can work with for a few years, right? And see see what they can build around him. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. You don't let the, the four-time MVP kick his way out the door without thinking you have a backup plan. Not every team has a good quarterback, uh, including the one that they had Aaron Rodgers for a brief uh, spell. Uh, the Zach Wilson drama goes on. NFL's like, a, you know this. I mean, it's a it's a 365-day year reality show. Ask Taylor Swift. She knows. Uh, she's all on board with this. So uh, so we got, let's get to some of the questions. I'm Bob Harris. I'm from Football Diehards. It's a website. Go there. Use the promo code Diehards <laughs> to get 15% off anything you use. Listen to the Football Diehards on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio many days a week. Listen to Fantasy Dirt every day from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time with Lindsey Rhodes, uh, keeping Michael Fabiano between the rails somehow. It's a very difficult job. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> um, and uh, let's get to some questions here. Colin O'Garo, 10-team PPR, pick three of these five running backs. Uh, Walker, Henry, Swift, Pacheco, or Javante Williams. Look, I mean, okay. Go ahead, Lindsay. Who was Walker, the last one? Wait, who was the last one? Walker, Javante Henry, Swift, Williams. Pacheco, Javante Williams. Or Javante Williams. Yeah. All right, what do you think? Um, I think, you know, you have enough pieces here that if you wanted to sit uh, Henry this week, you could. I mean, Kenneth Walker, to me, is unsuitable right now. He's the uh, a, a Offensive Player of the Week in the NFC this week. So, and, and he's been playing really well. It's a couple of good games, and I don't think you could sit DeAndre Swift. So those two are the easy calls. I don't know that I need to sit, play Henry. I probably would over Pacheco, but it's, that's the call for me. It's between Pacheco and Swift. Denver's playing who? Minnesota or Chicago? That's a pretty good matchup. Did he need two or three? He needed three. So we've got two. We need one more out of yeah. uh, Henry, Pacheco, I'm gonna, or Wolf. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw away Henry and Pacheco. Fair enough. Javante Williams against the Chicago Bears. That that's worked out pretty well for people. Clayton Morris wants to I, know. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say I think this is the week for Javante Williams, right? Like in, in <clears throat> that matchup on both sides. It's the week that you can play those running back assets that have been completely right. disappointing. Like Javante Williams with all of his single digit outings and then Herbert and Roshan kind of um, in same boat for the Bears, right? The the fact that they're playing each other and that those two teams, the defenses have allowed the most and the second most fantasy points allowed to running backs. Like this is the week. Go ahead. You're going to get a neutral game script. That's not going to happen very frequently for these running backs on these teams that are these teams that are going to be uh, trailing and in uh, passing game scripts the ma the majority right. of the time, it, I think. I think it, this is the week, it, and we find out if they can hit any kind of a ceiling. Like, this is our best-case scenario. So if you ever want to play Javante it, Williams or get a read on whether or not you can moving forward, this is the week to do it. As you're saying this, it just hit me. The, the Denver Broncos coming off a 50-point loss yeah. <laughs> uh, are, are favored yeah. in Chicago, right? They're, they're like uh, – <laughs> like, Point and a half favorites in Chicago. So yeah, I'm with you there. And uh, like, and so here's the big problem I think with sitting the, the superstars, the people you invested in, the Derrick Henrys, you know, who is uh, not like a high high end investment, but round two, round three. Um, you, it's the FOMO, the fear of missing out on the breakout performance. Look, you might miss a good game, right? It doesn't mean you're going to miss every good game. And if other guys are giving you at least serviceable games where Henry has not to this point, I'm okay waiting. I just am. Uh, Clayton Morris wants to know, Swift, Jones, Mostert, or A-Chan, he needs to start too. He's not saying PPR or not. I'll assume it is. Like right now, it, it, I mean, what would it take to get you to not play Swift? Would it be only having Mostert and A-Chan? 
<laughs> I'm right. These are these are good options. So congratulations, right? first of all, that you have these four guys to choose from because uh, that's not what most of my my zero RB builds don't look like this this year. And this actually could be a zero RB build, right? Like I mean, could for be, the most right, part, like totally. Jones is Jones is the highest guy um, from an yep. ADP standpoint. And we're getting him back. We're getting him back on a short week, coming off an injury. So maybe that bumps him down. Um, just considering the other options that you have here. I think Swift is a guy you have to keep playing the way that he's looking, running behind that line, opening up those yeah. holes. I mean, I just uh, think his he looks so explosive and the offense is great. You want exposure to that offense. They're going to be up more often than not. And so he's going to have positive game scripts, though. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see what the backfield rotation looks like with Gainwell because they did work him in a little bit last week. And now that you add another week and more practices and opportunity for him to get healthier, do they go more even if they do take a lead, then do they have Kenneth Gainwell come in to run out the clock? And does that hurt our fantasy upside for DeAndre Swift? I'm not sure. Uh, most certain a Chan are the, the tough parts of this to me because they're going up against the Bills. But I little, think that the Dolphins are still going to be able to put up points and move the ball. I don't think the defenses are going to take over, right? Like, I mean, Vegas doesn't think so either with their, what is it, a 53 and a half point total? I think so. Let me look, double check that. But, but like, you know, it, remember, Brees Hall gashed them, Buffalo in the opener. It's not like they've been an impenetrable wall. Uh, so, yeah, it's a 54 point total there. So, um, I'm, I'm, I want one. It's going to be one of those Dolphins. I'm probably going to go with the first guy in the lineup myself. It's going to be Mostert. I'm going to sit Jones and, you know, like, I, I think they probably have a pretty good plan for him. And it's not a horrible matchup, but Detroit, you know, kind of corralled uh, Atlanta's rushing game this past week. So I just don't know how I get away from this one without putting one of those Dolphins in there. And it's going to be the first guy 100%. up. If you, look, Clayton, if you have a, if you're a hunch, if you have a hunch, these are all top, you know, 15 guys. Play your hunch. But that's the direction we mm -hmm. go, Swift and uh, and Mostert at the moment. John Fusek needs one at the PPR. DJ Moore versus Denver. Montgomery, assuming he plays versus Green Bay. Or Dubs versus Detroit. One. Lindsey Rhodes. One. Moore versus Denver and Pat Sertan. Two. Montgomery coming off an injury going up against the Green Bay Packers, who haven't been that tough a matchup. Uh, or Romeo Dubs versus Detroit. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily feel like I need DJ Moore. Who was the third one again? Romeo Dubs. It was DJ Moore, Montgomery. Romeo Dubs. Crap. DJ Moore, Montgomery, and Dubs. That's a tough one. I, I would not go more. I'll say that. Um I, that that whole Chicago offense has me completely running scared for the like. I just can't. I can't. This is. I mean, this is the week to do it against the Broncos. Like I said, but there there are a lot of components there that are in play. I just. I I have lost faith, and I know everybody else has lost faith in Justin Fields. I've lost faith in the coaches' um, ability too. to put them all in positions. Like more than anything, I just don't have any kind of read on predictability and like oh well this is what happened last week well then the, the obvious pivot is to this like i don't have any faith that what i think is obvious is actually going to be implemented so that scares me um god maybe montgomery uh, i'm probably i'm gonna probably so we've got christian watson coming back so you know, i think the, i think i mean i kind of like dubs a little bit in this one like Montgomery, maybe you listen to the pregame reporting and see how healthy he is. Maybe that decision's made for you. I probably, so I'm just looking at our early rankings right now, and we have more ahead of Dubs, but they're right in the same range. So you people know yeah. how I do this. If people are in the same tier, right? Like I'm not going to pretend I can discern between wide receiver 40 and wide receiver 43 uh, with that much clarity. I go with my hunch on this one. My hunch is I'm with Lindsay. I don't really want to play this Chicago passing attack. It, this is another one where I, I don't need to play the breakout. I don't need to play the great game. I mean, he's already had, he had a good game. What was last week was not horrible, right? I just want to double check my numbers here. Last week was, you know, they, they at least made an effort, an effort to get him the football. Six targets, he had caught three of them. He had the touchdown. That was the difference maker. 
I could go dubs here really easy and just like play it. I think that's like the safe play to me. That's how it feels. Um, yeah, the 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 thing about Montgomery that I don't necessarily love as the season goes on is what we saw from Jameer Gibbs last week that we didn't like when he moved into that role where he's more of like the traditional running back and you're not moving him around in the offense. And <clears throat> if you have David Montgomery back there, David Montgomery is your traditional running back. Right. And when Jameer Gibbs moved into that role last week, it was, I think it was like 17 rush attempts for or something like that, but uh, they didn't use him as much in the passing game and he didn't score a touchdown. So the fantasy, the production's just not particularly high. So what you're seeing there is, like that type of running back could have a great game and still only have eight fantasy points for you, right? And so I am actually thinking, and I don't know if I'm right, but I'm actually thinking that as the season goes on, I kind of like Jameer Gibbs more if David Montgomery is in the backfield taking on that role. And then Jameer Gibbs is being used in a way where they're lining him up all over the field and they're throwing to him more frequently. And he's also in the backfield every once in a while. But I want that PPR value because the difference between the two from week two to week three, anyway, David Montgomery was like 16 rush attempts. Say rush attempts and rushing yards were roughly same, same. Um, the, you know, rushing yards per attempt, I think it was like 4.2 for one and 4.7 for the other the difference was that David Montgomery scored a touchdown. The touchdowns are volatile. Like who knows when that's going to come. So I think I like the the pass catching role a little bit more. And I'd like the freedom to free up Jameer Gibbs to go do that. I could totally be wrong. Obviously opportunity. If you're a true feature back, a lot of times that's going to lead to the fantasy production. But I just, um, in this particular offense and the way that they're using him, uh, I, th I think I like Jameer Gibbs better in the role that we saw in weeks one and two, assuming that they just add more snaps and more routes because right. they talked about easing right. him in. And I'm going to take their word for that, that, that there's more to come um, in that type of a role. I don't know. That's a tough From one just because of Christian Johnson Watson here. potentially. <laughs> well, Christian Watson right. coming back is the only thing that makes me feel like Romeo Dobbs is a little bit more up in the air. Like that's the only reason that might I'm even open it up though. That might even, that might open it up a little more, you know, maybe a you're little, right. So, so I'm right. probably going that direction there. Uh, Dominic, okay. uh, we, that was convoluted. That, that's a tough call. Uh, Dominic Conti, uh, two quarterback league, seven points per TD. Ooh, seven. I have fields seven. versus Denver Wilson versus Sh Chicago and Lamar versus Cleveland has to sit one. I mean, for me, this is an easy call. I'm sitting fields until further notice. So like the famous Mike Dempsey sacrificial benching is is necessary for him. But also, I mean, Denver, I mean, Wilson against Chicago for sure, I think is an easy play. Uh -huh. Jackson, it's a super tough matchup against Cleveland. Miles Garrett would like a word with him and may well have a number of them. Are you, are you into fields? Yes. You know, or yeah. This week, no, no. Even with the matchup, I'm just, I'm just scared. I just need to see it. I need to see them run him. Because at this point, I mean, even, even against a bad defense, what I've seen from Chicago, I'm not 100 percent sure that the offense actually even benefits from that. Like, yeah. they should, but I feel like they've almost been it's like which bad is worse, and I'm not, I'm not 100 percent convinced that the Chicago offense is going to be less bad than the than the Broncos <laughs> defense. Like, it's just a disaster. Like, I need, I need them to start running him on purpose the way they did down the stretch last year. I'm, this is one yep. of the things that's been the most frustrating for me. I'm ranting and raving and people are, I'm sure sick of hearing me do it, but I just don't understand using Justin Fields down the stretch, the way that they did seeing not just fantasy production that they got out of him, but the rushing production, what that did to the offense, like they were putting up 30 points a game. So yes, they were losing games, but that wasn't on the offense. It, was, it wasn't because the offense wasn't scoring enough points to win games. And in a perfect world, yes, you would like him to be more well-rounded and you would like him to um, develop more in the passing game. But what we've seen so far, I just, it's not clicking with the coaches, whatever they're asking him to do, he's not on the same page. When, when your right. quarterback is saying that I'm in my head too much, then I think <laughs> we need to like hit the pause button, take a step back. Let's just get back to letting his athleticism take over, do a little bit more of what worked down the stretch for you last year. And I'm, flabbergasted that they didn't do that last week. And I know at the end of the week, when you go look at the design run numbers, they look like they did because the numbers are there. But I feel like it was at the end of the third quarter, he was still at two runs. 
like two rush attempts. So they just did it like at the very, very end when the game was completely out of control. And like, what are, what are we doing here? This needs to be more part of the plan as far as I'm concerned, but also until I see it, I'm not, I'm not putting him out there. I just think it's a disaster waiting to happen. Um, the Wilson Lamar thing I think is interesting because Lamar does have a tough matchup that, um, left side blocker is going to have a real tough time against miles Garrett because he had a real tough time against Samson Ebicom, uh, against the Colts. Like there was Ben Fennel did a, a video montage of him, the pressure that Lamar saw against Indy. And so I am concerned about what miles Garrett could do there. If there's a quarterback who's built to escape from that and to create mm -hmm. in the face of that, it's Lamar. But I just think that this is not necessarily like last week's situation I liked for Lamar. Um, this week's, I feel like we're going to get, we're not going to hit our ceiling. I don't think this is going to be the best Lamar number that we can see. And I think the opposite is probably true for Russell against this Chicago uh, defense. And by the way, Russell, like, I I'm not a Russell fan, you know, but Russell's putting up 20 points a game in fantasy. Right. So, like, he's one of the top fantasy quarterbacks so far this season. Yep. So, in this matchup, I kind of feel like I'd play I'd play Russell, and I can't believe I'm saying that. I would as well. I got a little rushing equity, and I would stick with Lamar as well. I hope Ronnie Stanley comes back. He's going to be a little beat up, but it seems like he's on track to play, and they might get their center back as well. Uh, so, interesting stuff there. Mike Arts, hello. How are you? Hello. Uh, hi, Andrea. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, uh, let's see. What do we got here? What is a winning question? Ah, Mike Arts is stacked at wide receiver and a super flex. Picked up both Roshan Johnson to take Dell on waivers. Is it wrong of him to try to turn them into a turn them into a tight a tight end, which is his weakness? Has Kincaid mm. and Musgrave and Kittle, and it's uh, uh, yeah. So so and I wait. Like, he has Kittle. I'm, he has Kittle. I have oh no, he's got Kittle is on an zero and sixteen or no and sixteen. I guess that's a, they're playing double games. So moving Roshan and Tank, I think, is the question for Kittle. Got it. Do, if you were the Kittle owner, would that be enough to uh, entice you? Roshan and Tank, if I'm the Roshan and Tank owner, uh, Kittle isn't enough to entice me. Kittle's a little... Really? Like, okay. The, the tendency is a little hit or miss. I might take my chances on that one. I mean, like, like Musgrave has been pretty solid. I mean... You know, I mean, you know, the role at least at Kincaid, I think, will come on. I might stand pat because I got Tank Dell and Roshan, too. I like Tank Dell. It's working. I had a blind spot I for him coming Tank into the season. I am no longer yeah. blind. No. What do you think? Were you, were you with Fabs in the, like, concerned about his size camp? Like, him, Tutu Atwell, too. They would both like to take me out behind the goalpost and beat me right now. Zay so Flowers, a little less so. oh, the, the, the you size truthers are losing this year. We are. There's, there's no doubt about it. There's no 100%. doubt. About it. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, I, I, I love tank. I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I've, I didn't draft Kittle. I have zero shares of Kittle because Kittle is so volatile. Mm -hmm. Kittle will go away for stretches and play great right. football as a blocker. Right? Like he just, that's what's going to happen. That's part of his game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's part of the yep. problem. You're not going to get him on a week week basis. Right. So right now, just, you know, as things stand now, Kittle's like tight end seven. Musgrave's tight end 11. And Kincaid's not, you know, hasn't been making the contribution that I expect him to make down the stretch. And I keep referring to my buddy, uh, Matt Wallman, the rookie scouting portfolio, who thinks this is going to take time to develop, but thinks he'll ultimately become that slot receiver in that offense, which is something they rely on heavily. They're mixing it up with, with what, between Sherfield, Deontay Hardy, we're seeing some of so um i kind of th i kind of think i might stand pat and roll with musgrave i get it you know but kittle is such a good blocker he stays in a heck of a lot he does seem to have a better affinity with brock purdy than he has with other quarterbacks though so uh, i just think you're giving up too much mike that's that's where i'm at yeah jim go i have mims positions. and dubs go okay, ahead go ahead mims and dubs i have mims i have i have so much mims by oh. the way i was like an early early adopter on mims so I wish Sean Payton had more of him. Uh, I have Mims and Dubs as reserves. No one in the league picked up Quentin Johnson. My other wide receivers are Pickens, Diggs, and Olave. Would you pick up Johnson? If so, would you drop? So the question is, would you drop Mims or Dubs for Quentin Johnston? I don't think I would. I don't I know. Either. Would I don't think I would. I, would. I don't. I wouldn't either. I mean, the you know, so. 
Mike Williams, obviously, in case you're out there wondering why someone might be interested in this, Mike Williams done for the season. Um, Quentin Johnston, does he come in? He does, I, I, I'm not expecting him. I guess if you if you believe he's going to come in and just usurp or, or eat up the Mike Williams role, I think Josh Palmer is going to be a big factor or a, enough of a factor that it worries me. I know there are people that question Quentin Johnston. Why isn't he already playing more in a pass-heavy offense? So I kind of like your other receivers. I kind of like Mims and Dubs. I think Mims might end up being a huge big play threat. I mean, if you if you if you felt compelled to do it, I mean, it would probably be the guy with the lesser role, which is Mims. But I would feel horrible about that. I'm probably not doing it, Jim. I just, I mean, I Where just feel think? like Mims is what we've seen from Mims in what little we've actually seen from Mims is so insanely impressive. What his speed brings to the table. Um, I mean, just I, I think. I really like him. And so I kind of think too, reading the room there in Denver and looking at like, it's just been bad. And he's been the bright light, like it, like the yeah. one, right? So uh, if I were Sean Payton, I might maybe go a little bit more of that. Like, let's play to that. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see if I we can too. turn things around and get some juices going. And so I, I think I'm I'm in on Mims. Um, I like Dobbs in that offense. And I just don't know how Quentin fits in. I'm with you. I, I, right. I'm not 100% sure yet. If I wouldn't be adverse to if I had some maneuverability down on my bench, and I know that they threw out these names as the two that they would drop, so I would say you probably don't. But if there's anyone else that you just don't don't see fitting into your lineup, these are all like guys that have upside because there's so much unknown attached to them. I might go right. with like if there's more of like a mid-tier that you kind of know exactly what you're getting there and you don't think that they will overtake the best guys on your team anytime soon, then maybe I would drop that for Quentin Johnston if there's um, any way to do that, just just to have him, just to I, watch and I, see. I feel I, I think the, the same for me. I, you know, and if I if I really felt compelled to do this, Jim, and I'm sure you you know you're not carrying two kickers or two defenses, you probably would have mentioned that. So um, I would you know it would probably be. Probably be for Mims, but but I love his upside maybe more than I like Johnson's. But Johnson's in a better offense, so I get it. It's a it's a totally fair mm -hmm. question. Dominic Conti wants to know if we picked one for a full PPR Gibbs versus Green Bay tomorrow. Obviously, uh, Sky Moore is it Moore? Oh, DJ Moore. Who's which Moore is playing Baltimore? Oh, Elijah Moore uh, versus Baltimore or Hollywood Brown versus San Rondell. Francisco. I've been through every more. I, uh, Rondell Moore, the better uh, a better running back than receiver, it turns out. Who knew? <laughs> okay, what were, our, what were our choices again? I got it's, lost in the uh, more. Gibbs, Gibbs, Moore, or Hollywood Brown. One in a flex. Why did I just throw my pen there? Okay, I need to I need to look up who's playing who. I'm not going oh, Elijah Moore. Thank you. Yeah, it's Moore versus Baltimore. It's Gibbs, obviously, versus uh, the Packers tomorrow, mm -hmm. or uh, Hollywood Brown versus San Francisco. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> I think I go Gibbs. I think I would go Gibbs as well. Hollywood's been getting the touchdowns, and again, further evidence of what I've been talking about all year is don't let the less than ideal or horrible even quarterback situations in your mind scare you off of good wide receivers. They tend to get the job done, uh, and Hollywood's getting the job done. And Josh Dobbs, uh, the rocket scientist, is is helping him along the way. By the way, um, Josh Dobbs' catchable target rate—it's high. Like, I mean, I'm not—I'm not saying that he, you know, should be anyone's long-term answer at quarterback, but we're not seeing um, the death knell that I think we thought we were going to see from the quarterback play mm -hmm. for the other assets right. in the offense. Like we've talked, you know, we talk ad nauseum about what the quarterback play does to Kyle Pitts at the tight end position who has a 53% catchable target rate this year, which is insane. Like that's so disgusting. We're not seeing that in Arizona. I, I think it, like part of it though is, you know, like, like, not great quarterback play can can still people can still get past that but when the coach doesn't believe in the quarterback which arthur smith clearly does not believe in desmond ritter at this point or have the confidence in him to to lean on I'm him whereas sure in arizona passing. in arizona they don't give a f they are just like let's go uh which is maybe a good way to approach it i was i was mocking poor jonathan gannon earlier this year and now i'm starting to feel like 
well, maybe there's a little more to this than I like. Or, or maybe it's just good luck. Maybe when Kyler Murray turns comes back, they'll turn back into a pumpkin. I don't know. Tootsie Pop, Rachel wants to know, Flex Lockett, Palmer, or Michael Thomas? Lockett had a lousy week last week, didn't he? <laughs> like, I hate when I see like someone coming off a lousy week. Um, mm -hmm. It was not a great week. It was uh, <clears throat> of those three, let's see, Thomas against uh, Tampa Bay, Lockett. It's a Monday night game against the Giants. Might be heading that okay. way. I, I'm going Lockett. <clears throat> and this is also I'm, a case I'm, where, for me, this is the, uh, the bet on talent. Like, I'm not going to overthink this. I just think Lockett's by far the best receiver of those three guys at this stage of yeah, his career. I'm, Michael Thomas I'm was. I'm going that way as well. I'm, I'm going that way as well, Rachel. So good luck with that one. Uh, and else? by the way, yeah, Seahawks, Seahawks along the second most fantasy points per game to wide receivers, 54.7. No, never mind. It's backwards, Giants. It's backwards. But I, but, but all my Isaiah Hodges shares are very excited to hear this. Oh, we do have a Darren Waller <laughs> question here. So let's, let's, that won't help. Let's go with this one. Uh, Golf Boy wants to know, I have Waller and Hunter Henry in a non-PPR. Does it make sense to bench Waller at least until Barkley returns? If you're playing Hunter Henry, he's just playing better. I'm sorry. You know, this is a great example of a guy that I'm like hugely invested in. The targets have been there, right? I'm not complaining about the targets. I'm complaining about the offense. It's just not hitting stride, right? And until Danny Dimes starts throwing dimes, he's not right now. Um, and part of that maybe is, you know, lack of Barkley, lack of offensive line play, whatever it is, Hunter Henry's getting the job done. Although they went to the three tight end set last week, the three tight end set and opened the door to Pharaoh Brown kind of on a, a weird play. I'm, I'm probably leaning Hunter Henry here over Waller, but I look, I'm invested in Waller and maybe I'm thinking ceremonial benching. So Lindsay, correct me if I am wrong. Well, um, I think I would have done what you're saying last week Oh, Dallas. last week scared yeah. me and maybe maybe i'm just reacting to the lack of point production by hunter henry when i did put him into my lineup because you're right in the first okay. couple of weeks all of the advanced numbers were like hunter henry's the guy and then also that for me that matched the narrative that we heard in the off season which is uh they were talking about the tight ends there and they brought in get and they were like no 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 it's hunter henry <clears throat> everyone talking about how important he was going to be for the offense. And then the fact that we started seeing that in the preseason in terms of like target share and all that kind of stuff. And then in the early going of the regular season, the fact that that matched, I thought, okay, this is, this is real and we can ride this. And then I put him in last week and Pharaoh freaking Brown comes out of nowhere. And again, <laughs> it was two targets, two catches. It just happens to be, you know, he busts a long one for 58 and we've got a touchdown attached to that. So he kind of steals some of the production. Meanwhile, Hunter Henry had five targets, but only two of them were caught for 17 yards. I think this might be the whole like once bitten twice shy type thing. And maybe I'm overreacting to last week, but I think that I'm going to stick with Waller and the talent in this particular case I, and just I'm going to do because of the matchup I'm, I'm going to go with the matchup Dallas might be angry after getting pummeled by the Arizona Cardinals and not as much by Zach Ertz if I'm not mistaken by the way but but either way um it was not a good game for Dallas I'm expecting them to rebound is that one in Dallas yes it's in Dallas uh I'm I'm with you I'm going to go I'm going to stick with Waller here against Seattle it's more about the matchup uh, uh, than anything else there. So, all right. Thank you for course correcting me on that one. I'm like, I'm so eager to sit my studs that I'm like looking for reasons to. Uh, here's another Dude, one. John of, Zizek, you ahead. brought up Ertz in Arizona. I mean, what he still, if you just filter stats for the whole season, he still leads all tight ends in target share because it was so extreme in the first couple of weeks. But yeah. last week it dipped to 9.5%. Like it plummeted his target share just fell off completely. So I'm really curious to see what his usage looks like this week. Is this it coming back to earth and them going, oh, now we have a better feel for what the offense should look like. And so we're not just going to completely, you know, uh, rely on our, our security blanket that is Zach Ertz and we're going to spread the ball around or uh, I, this, that, that number concerned me a lot about earth because yeah. I was telling people mm -hmm. go play Ertz, you know? Um, and then, and then that was not so great. <laughs> so I'll yeah, be keeping an eye on his usage this week. 
I will too, but I mean, great story for him, right? Like just coming back from the ACL and kind of, uh, you know, sooner than maybe we expected and and hot right out of the chute. Sorry, Trey McBride. It happens. Old guys sometimes get the job done. I don't know why that bothered and matters to me, but. Uh, Abs isn't even here. Uh, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I sit McLaurin, says John Fusek, for, uh, versus Philadelphia for Dubs versus Detroit or or Damian Pierce, who is not playing Houston. He's playing uh, Pittsburgh. Dubs or Pierce over Terry, scary Terry McLaurin? Well, they get- the Eagles weirdly are giving up a lot of fantasy points to wide receivers, aren't they? Or did that go Yeah, away? they're also got a hell of a pass rush. And, uh, and it turns out the commanders are not great at pass protection. <laughs> No, you, those week. 19 Corey sacks Bell. for Sam Howell on the season. You're not enjoying that. I don't. I don't know what you're I, what you're talking about. Well, I'm enjoying them slightly more than Sam Howell. Um, Terry McLaurin, I have on a lot of benches, so um, I have kind of, and I think he's such a good wide receiver, and and I was really really high on Sam Howell before the season, so I I I'm I might not have been right about that. By the way, though. Uh, because when people, people say stuff, you know, and you, this happens to you all the time, I know, um, where they like get on you about calls, like the Sam Howell call was a relative to ADP call. It was never Sam Howell is going to be the start, like your QB one, whatever it, it was. Um, when you're choosing from the guys that are way down here in your drafts, to me, that's, that's a better gamble. Hasn't proven to be that y'all though in week two, we looked great, right? because of the rushing upside and their elements to his game that feel like they have more upside from a fantasy standpoint than the other gambles that you're going to take in that range. Um, CJ Stroud would like a word, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's not working for those uh, passing assets in Washington so far, Terry and Dotson in particular. I mean, like, you know, we, we'll see Dotson get at the K. I, I just, I need to see a little more from this offense in general, a little better protection. I, I mean, I'm not against playing him. I, I'm like keen. I don't think it's like, again, it's not a quarterback scaring me off problem. It's just a situation the quarterback faces every week. Uh, California, I'm just looking at the numbers real quickly here. Hi. I'm probably, I'm probably going Dubs, and I will, you know, I wouldn't talk you out of uh, Damian Pierce, but it hasn't been fantastic. I'm going Romeo Dubs in this one. The Damian Pierce thing um, for me is that they still aren't throwing him the ball. Like this right. was something that we heard this year that that was going to be a part of his game and that they were going to actually throw to him a little bit more. Um, I think that he and Dalton Schultz are getting knocked uh, by the fact that they're actually, their passing assets are way better than we expected. So th- for the same oh. reason, like the thought process about Dalton Schultz in later rounds and drafts was kind of the same one that I had for like a Hayden Hurst in Carolina. Like who else are they going right. to throw to, you know? So right. they like, they just don't have so anyone to throw to rookie. and then, and they've got a rookie quarterback and they like their security blankets and they're mm-hmm. probably going to get frazzled and go to the tight end every once in a while. And CJ Stroud has developed faster than most of us thought. And Tank Dell looks great. Nico Collins looks great. And so now all of a sudden you have actual uh, passing game weapons. You don't have to rely on the tight end. You don't have to check down to the running back. And so maybe that's part of the reason that Damian Pierce hasn't been as much a part of the passing game as we thought coming into the season. The upside for him, for me, as the season goes on, though, is I think it's going to be a better offense that they've been in years. And so maybe there's more touchdown upside than he had last year he won't be like running for 90 yards and putting up nine fantasy points because every once in a while those are going to fall into the end zone i'll buy that and i do think this look cj stroud i mean the the attempts have been copious i mean i think he's what second in the league i think it attempts right up there i mean i think mac jones had a heck of a lot too but anyway so yeah so i think that's the direction i'm going to go dubs there uh slightly over pierce and you can give uh john uh, mclaurin the ceremonial benching uh, Mr. Scamper's gross question has to start one and a half point PPR. AJ Dillon versus the Lions or wait for P. Ryan at the Bears or Latavius Murray versus Miami. Oh my gosh. You, are you sure? Are you sure these are our options? These are our options. Sorry, Scampers. I I would go P. Ryan. And I just I dropped P. Too. Ryan in several leagues <laughs> to, make, I mean, to pick up AJ. More, more, but. It hasn't been great for Dylan and Latavius Murray. I mean, I think he's probably more likely to get you a touchdown. I mean, 
you know, just based on what we've seen so far, but it's like a three-way split for him getting the touchdown. He's got to get it or Harris, you know, over Harris and over Josh Allen, but he is, he's been getting it right. So, I mean, that's what you're hanging your hat on. If you go with Murray, I don't know if P Ryan has the, what was the volume last week? I need to look. Cause I mean, well, it's let's not look at last week. Before. Cause last week they were, they were down, right? Like they were upside right, down right. the entire game as they were just getting run off the field. So let's not look at that necessarily. I mean, you so can, against but... uh, against the commanders, it was uh, pretty minimal. One carry, four yards. He had four that was it? catches on four targets for 20 yards. Yep. And it's a half point PPR. I'm probably, oh my I might gosh, take I my chance. I think it was that upside here. down. Crap. Right? Week one, it was, week one, it was. Uh, week one, it was more of a split. Uh, yeah, it was more of a split. It was almost even. It was well, not even, but thirteen to eight on the carries. The targets were way were way heavier though for P Ryan. He had four of four, caught him for thirty seven. So he had a pretty serviceable game week one. Uh, last week, uh, yeah, it's just going to be hard. He had three carries for nine yards, uh, three targets, caught two of them for fifteen yards. I'm not. I mean, you, you're, you're, if you're, if you're gambling scampers on a touchdown, Murray is the gamble here. Uh, probably AJ okay. Dillon and- probably is the best play. I mean, he might be, okay. and I, but I hate saying like that because he's been so line. bad. He's been so bad, but but my guess is he'll be on the field more than any of the rest of these guys. So maybe you just have to right. fingers crossed. I gotta look now. I gotta look. Yeah, Dave, 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 Dave. yeah. It just oh, been bad. I'm I mean, pro- and and I'm pro- with an open backfield, like just not able to take advantage of it, and so. I'm very much looking forward to Aaron Jones coming back for a, just a multitude of reasons. But yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think AJ Dillon's that good. But but I, I don't think he's that good okay. either. But I think he might have more volume. I, I think he might get more opportunities. You go back to week one, he ended up with 15, 13 carries. He did nothing with him, a yard and a half. But what is Latavius Murray doing? I mean, it's just like it's a touchdown or nothing from him, right? Two for eight in week one. Hmm. I had six. I'm going to be honest. These are. Touchdown. I'm going Murray. I'm going Murray. I'm. I've sold okay. myself. I'm taking the chance He's, on the touchdown. Feel strongly. Campers. Okay. There you go. I, Murray. I don't feel Murray's strong. our answer. <laughs> we just. We just had to like do research on if I, like not who the people were. I'm being sarcastic. Frankie like, wants to know Lindsay how how great it is to work with a fantasy Hall of Famer every day, and I'm thinking you don't get to work with me every day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fabs. Uh, Fabs is the best. I love Fabs. Fabs and you, Bob, <laughs> like you and I both give Fabs a hard time um, because he's a very, very good friend of ours. Uh, Fabs is like among the most loyal friends that you will ever make in your whole entire life. He's that friend that like totally looks out for you. And this is, this is, I think, the greatest compliment about a friend. Fabs is the person who brings your name up in rooms you're not in and is constantly talking you up to people when you're not there. So, and I know I've heard from many people like in the fantasy community, they're like, Fab says the nicest things about you. And I know he brings up my names in um, rooms I'm not in, in a positive way. And I think that um, that's, that's something that doesn't necessarily come out in our show when I'm just giving him crap mm-hmm. and telling him his fantasy opinions are dumb. But I also think that's the beauty of our friendship that like we both love each other enough that I can say those things and it's fine. Yes. Uh, Mr. Scampers also, if Aaron Jones plays tomorrow, I have to start him in the Scott Fish Bowl over the likes of P. Ryan or Boyd. Yes. I mean, I yeah. like the Boyd matchup, but I need to see more from, from him. We got a few more minutes left. We'll get to these questions. By the way, this is Lindsay Rose. You find her on Hi. the Twitter device or whatever they call it, at Lindsay underscore Rose, R-H-O-D-E-S. Lindsay with an A. Uh, before the Y. And I'm at Football Die Hard, of course. Football Die Hard's is the website and the radio program. Fantasy Dirt is the radio program on series for her. So we'll get through the last couple questions. This has been fantastic, okay. Lindsay. You did a good work on these things. Uh, what do we much. got here? Just it up. Oh, no. We, we've, been, we've been timing it out nicely. Um, we want to get, uh, let's see, Cleveland face. <laughs> I have to play Monty if he plays. I think uh, I get it. I, I would probably play Montgomery if he plays too. It might depend on my options. Uh, Tank Dell versus Pittsburgh. Pacheco versus New York Jets in a flex PPR this week. I'd go Tank. I might play Tank. 
<laughs> We're about tanking. Tank. Uh, I'm all in on tank. KJ Frederick. Yeah. I think I think it's fair. It's Houston against uh, I want to say Pittsburgh. Um, yeah. I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going to play the I'm going to play the wide receiver. But Checo, I think it can you know it's it's going to be a little hit or miss. But Jarek McKinnon week is going to come. Uh, Pacheco week is going to come. Tyler Algier, Zeke, Zach Charbonnet, David Montgomery start two in a full PPR. Um, <clears throat> David Montgomery if he plays tomorrow. And probably Algier. I mean, it's Zeke against his old team. Anything there for you, Lindsay? Oh, Zeke is out. No, no, a hundred percent. He's not. not. So then it just becomes Algier or Charbonnet and Charbonnet's role feels like it's ascending, but Kenneth Walker looked so good. I think it's a good matchup for him. I, I, I think I go Algier. Yeah, I think and I, I know I that, that has Algier not. And and Montgomery, if he assuming he plays, and if Montgomery doesn't play, I might go. I might go Elliott over Char uh, over Charmaine. I might. You would. I did think this is Kenneth Walker's offense. It's a, it's been pretty limited. Um, <clears throat> it's been mostly limited for Zeke too. I get it. They're they're just not running the ball well, but that'd be the direction I go. Dame thinks with Mike Williams injury, stash Quentin Johnson over at JSN at this point. So I'm going to say everyone who is drafting JSN ahead of Tyler Lockett, I think. His time will come. I don't think his time will be this year. I would probably stash him over. I would probably stash Johnston over JSN at this point. I think there's a clear path to workload. Yep. I 100% agree. And by the way, did you see that video of Gino pumping him up on the sideline, which was a great leadership yep. moment of Gino mic'd up? But I was a little bit like JSN needed that pump up and the pump up didn't even work. He was still all down on himself. And so I was a little bit, I was a little bit concerned about JSN actually. Um, <clears throat> after yeah, watching yeah. that video. Um, pick three. Oh, hi, John Lobb in the house. Just got home. Look forward to listening later. I appreciate you listening, John Lobb. And soon you will be on and you will have to listen to yourself as well as me. Thank you. Uh, PPR pick three from uh, Pierce. Rashad White, Gabe Davis, Cortland Sutton, Romeo Dobbs. Um, PPR. Rashad White's been horrible. Well, the volume has been there. Pierce, the volume's been there. I'm probably going. I'm probably going Sutton and Dobbs though are two of my choices for sure. And it's PPR. Um, yeah, I would. I would. I would. I would do that. I mean, we have one more piece. I would probably, I would probably take, I would probably go. Rashad White's playing at New Orleans. I don't like that matchup. I would probably go. I would probably go Pierce against Pittsburgh. A uh, slight lean there over, uh, over, over Gabe Davis. But I have a blind spot for Gabe Davis. He either shows up huge or he doesn't show up at all. Pierce, um, also Pittsburgh. So I feel like this is a neutral game script, right? So that's potentially going to be good. I feel like they're relatively evenly matched. The Steelers got gashed in week one by CMC. Like, what do we take away from that? I don't know. CMC is going to do that to everybody in week two. They uh, Chubb had his way with them until he got hurt. And then Jerome Ford came in and he actually didn't have as much success on a regular basis, but he did have that one big run and he put up a big fantasy number. Um, and then Josh Jacobs even had a better game against them than he's had against anybody else. I feel like he's a play at your own risk, but it is a plus <clears throat> matchup. So. Yep. I'm with you there. And final question, Andrea needs to know. One, Gus Edwards, who did practice fully today, coming off the concussion, people, so he's on track. Gus versus Cleveland. Akers versus Carolina in his new Dolphins oh uniform. Zeke versus no. Dallas. Uh, Kendra Miller versus Tampa PPR. Kendra Miller is a guy that I just way overplayed last week. Way overplayed. Way overplayed. But I might go back. I'm sorry. To you never know. It's tough to no, Tampa. you won't. So, you're not going back to Kendra Miller. You can't do that this week. I'm not. not You've got Kamara week, not and Tony Jones is the guy ahead of him. Um, of those Jones options, if Gus plays, I think it has to be. I think it has to be Gus, personally, and I yeah, don't I, I, love it. I, yeah, I don't love it either. Uh, but that would be my choice uh, over Acres. Just don't know what the role is going to be. I think I would assume it'd be minimal. You know, I'm assuming he'll get some work, but it'll probably be minimal. Madison played okay last week. Zeke versus Dallas. Maybe that's you can catch lightning in a bottle there, but that's all you're going to do. So 
Uh, there you have it. All right, everybody. This was great. Lindsay Rose is fantastic. You should listen to her every day on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, 1 to 3 p.m. with my friend Michael Fabiano and her doing the fantasy dirt thing. It's wonderful. You can catch me on the Football Diehards radio program Monday, Thursday, Friday at 10 p.m. We do three hours on Monday and Thursday. We do three hours on Saturday Ooh. night on NFL Radio Ooh. and the Fantasy Channel. Then you can catch me on the pregame show with Jeff Mans every Sunday from 11 to 1. And also here on the YouTube live stream Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on the hot seat. Uh, Saturdays, ask me anything. I'll be back here for all those questions. Parm or Ertz, I'll do this one. I'm going to go ahead and play Ertz. The touchdowns were great, but I don't know if I'm going to get them every week. And Ertz is fantastic. Go to footballdiehards.com. We have rankings there and all kinds of other stuff. You'll love it. It's a great website. I attest to it. We will see you next week.